Hey, welcome to Transform Your Workplace. I'm Brandon Laws, and we are here for a live uh, video-based podcast. I got Lacey part of Pillow with Zenium HR. Lacey, how are you? Doing good. L- living that remote uh, working life. <laughs> we're all kind of balancing it. Uh, right before we started recording, we were both dealing with our kids and getting them in their in their situated areas, <laughs> and it's a little chaotic. Yeah. Um, we're trying to work, you know, full time as many people are out there working. And uh, we <laughs> ran across an article that's very disturbing that we're going to talk about today. Mm-hmm. It's called How My Boss Monitors Me While I Work From Home. This is written by Adam Satariano. And um, yeah, he's a New York Times author, uh, writer, and uh, he basically did an experiment where he signed up for this software that will basically take snapshots of his screen as he's working throughout the day. And as you can imagine, the screen probably captured lots of different things on on the screen. Yeah, everything. (laughs) Like there was a, at one point, I think he was doing some like sort of online yoga course or something like that. (laughs) And he forgot to log out of the software and it was just taking snapshots and it caught the instructor. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. I didn't even know that software really existed. I didn't either, but I'm sure that that they're trying to market their uh, their services right now with so many people working remotely and not going into the office. Yeah. The whole thing feels to me like my gut reaction, and this is my opinion, of course, and not necessarily Zenium stance, but I think it's just gross. It makes me feel not so pleasant. Like I can't believe people actually use the software on, on others and they can't trust their, their people to work that they need to be monitoring what they're doing. Yeah. I I think it, if the intent is to make sure that people are staying motivated and continuing to be productive, I feel like it is going to have such an opposite effect. I think trust and autonomy breeds productivity and, um, I know that to be true for myself, for my employees, and and for many other people. Um, So to know that you're being monitored like that, I think would would really um, break down trust between the employee and and either the manager that's deciding to use it or even with the employer in general. It's a company-wide initiative. To me, it's a lazy form of managing and leading people. It's not even leading people. It's just micromanaging. It's like, you you don't trust your people enough to be productive. So you got to monitor them versus your job as a manager and leader should be to be having one-on-one conversations, uh, holding them accountable to their goals and uh, checking in with them. What do you need for me? What resources do you Mm -hmm. need? Um, How's my communication working? Like that to me seems like a better approach than to just stealthily big brother this thing up. Yeah. Yeah, it's not, you're right. It is not leadership. Um, I don't even think it's management. I, <laughs> I, it's creepy. And um, I, I guess I just feel like if, if you're at a point as an employer or a manager where you're feeling like you need to do that for, for your employee, I think there's a bigger problem. Um, and, and I think really the, the meat of what somebody's probably trying to get at could be accomplished, like you said, in regular one-on-ones, having direct conversations with employees. I think we should be asking employees how they're doing right now. If, if your folks are not used to working remotely, um, like me, I mean, this is hard. This is not, this is not easy. And add kids and everything else that we're dealing with on top of that. So, you know, checking in with them to see how they're doing is a much more effective uh, way of um, having a relationship and building a, a team or helping an employee to be more productive at work. Yeah. And going back to this article, the, uh, the author gave his editor access to the software to monitor him. And the editor even said like, Oh, this feels overly intrusive. And as sh- the editor put it, icky. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. Did you, what did you think about the, the, piece in the article where he talked about trying to kind of figure out how to game the system. Like if you can, if you're leaving it on a screen open, like a word doc, and maybe your manager's going to think you've just been working on that document for a while. And Mm -hmm. 
like, think about the time that people are going to spend trying to figure out how to work around this software versus maybe investing some of that energy into, I don't know, doing something better for your organization. Yeah, I totally agree. Like, I think if, if people knew that they're being tracked like this, they would totally game the system. Mm-hmm. Um, because like how often do you put energy into like a, say a project that takes a lot of mind power, but you're able to, because of the skills that you have, you're able to do it in a short amount of time and it produces the re- result that, you know, whoever's after it, client, your boss, whatever. And the rest of the time is, is yours. Like you finish what you needed to finish. And it's like the, the rest of the time you you could be emailing you, you might jump into a couple different things. Point is, it's not like you're working on one big project the whole day and that you're working hundred percent. Like you're going to be changing screens and also you might check your LinkedIn in between. And if this thing's just randomly taking snapshots of what you're doing, my guess is that most managers or IT people who are looking at this are going to be very disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think you're right. And I think it, there's a chance that it's going to capture things that really aren't a true reflection of what you like. I think that's what you're getting at that maybe what you were um, yeah. providing to the organization. And, you know, I even think, I mean, I can't like turn off my HR compliance hat, but I think about, you know, privacy rules. I think about what type of notices would be provided to employees that this is happening. I think about, you know, if we've got exempt workers who are, you know, ideally paid for the job they do and not the hours that they work. Um, you know, what is, what message is it sending if we're really tracking how much time is being spent on which websites and how frequently they're moving from task to task. Um, I think cultures of organizations have moved because of the gig economy and because we've got so many people that are, you know, sort of hustling on the side and and doing work for themselves too. Um, That has created a culture of employees who expect to be empowered and have autonomy. And this is um, really goes against that. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. It go, goes, goes against everything I believe in too. Me too. Like, <clears throat> I think that if your clients approached you and said, hey, is, do you know of any software that monitors employees and their productivity? I, you know, if I were in your shoes, I'd be like, no, I don't. Sorry. <laughs> <I think laughs> nor, do I rec- nor do I recommend it. <laughs> I think my first question would be like, let's talk a little bit about what's, philosophy. Going, like, what's going on here. What are we... What are we trying to get at? I think there's, there's obviously uh, businesses and people where they're not productive and they're not doing their job and they're playing around on the internet or doing things that aren't um, adding value to the organization. Let's manage those people from a, from a, um, you know, from being a leader really um, and, and do some discovery about what's happening. Um, So I'd probably want to do a little bit of root cause analysis and I definitely would not be out there um, talking about this as an option. I'd probably be spending more time on like performance management tactics and um, training on accountability and things like that. I'd probably give everybody a copy of QBQ, the book, you know, and and run everybody through an accountability workshop and Mm -hmm. how do we hold each other accountable? Because I think it's, it's a, more of a, you want to ingrain it in the culture and you want to be able to have a productive conversation about like, okay, here's, here are your goals. Here are the metrics or the KPIs you need to hit. And we're going to check in every week or every two weeks for a one-on-one and Mm -hmm. we're going to see your progress is towards the goals. And if you're not hitting those goals, then that's a whole different conversation, but how you get there, I don't, I wouldn't care as long as you hit the deadlines that we agreed upon. Right. And I, I think about the employee who's maybe surfing around on the internet, clicking through things, not doing their work. Are they bored? Are they in the wrong job? Um, what am I doing as a leader to not make them, you know, have yeah. enough to do? I think it sort of, this is one of those situations where unfortunately for the manager, it kind of rolls back up to them. Like, what are you doing um, here that's creating an environment where your, your employee feels like it's okay to do that? Yeah. So what do you think? You think a lot of employers are using these kind of tools? No, I, I, I don't know of any that are, I know employers are struggling to manage remote workers for sure. And it's a challenging time. It is, it is. And I empathize with them. Um, but I think if we can, um, be supportive, be empathetic leaders, have really clear expectations, like you said, set some objective measurable goals. Um, those are some of the best things that we can do if we've got our, our workforce now remote that maybe wasn't before. 
Yeah, absolutely. Well, Lacey, thanks for coming on and talking about this article. Sure, it's uh, it's very enlightening stuff. I can't believe uh, there are employers out there that that do this, but mm-hmm. you know what? I, I guess I'm on my soapbox right now, and uh, <laughs> I'm just glad that we work at Zenium. Same here, because I I just don't. It just goes against my philosophy of how how you treat people. Like they're you're treat people like adults, mm-hmm. uh, and have conversations with them. Totally. Don't monitor them. <laughs> <laughs> no. All right, Lacey. Uh, be well. Thanks for coming on the podcast. You too. Thanks, Brandon.